growing up, I had kind of your typical uh, suburbia childhood, grew up in a Christian family. I think I accepted Jesus into my heart at like eight different Bible camps. It's kind of a thing, you know, VBS just to make sure I had it right. Sixth, seventh grade, I remember just kind of th thoughts kind of getting askew, um, self-esteem kind of plummeting. I suffer from depression, um, pretty severe. I started developing self-harm tendencies. I um, kind of a little bit of a, an eating disorder. So entered high school, um, overweight, really no friends. People were scared of me. I was kind of that crazy girl. I was really alone. I was really broken and um, definitely miles away from uh, Jesus at that point. Inside, I was just looking for people to like me. I just wanted to feel accepted and I, I don't think I ever truly did. I was still really struggling with depression. I was still self-harming the first couple years of high school um, and then enter in drugs and alcohol and that's really where I just took off. I just felt alone and unworthy and just was searching for something to fill this void. When I found out I was pregnant, my parents gave me an ultimatum and they said, we'll help you with with your daughter. I knew I was gonna be a single mom, but you have to leave behind this this life you're living. You have to leave behind your friends, um, everything you're doing. The pregnancy was kind of um, what I needed at the time to get me out of that. Um, it saved my life at the time. I was on a fast track to, to death for sure. I had gone to my dad and I, I really just broke down and I said, I need a lawyer. I need to get out of the area because I had made some really dangerous people mad and um, I need rehab. I didn't even know what rehab was at the time and I knew then that nothing inside of me, nothing of this world was going to be able to, to help me and I knew that, that God was definitely the only um, thing that could really save me at that point. Coming to Crossroads really was, was a turning point for me, walking through those doors. I, I felt like, okay, this could be some place that I really could call home, and I, I've been seeking so much lately, and past couple months, really, I just, I've come back to Jesus, and He was always there, like, that was always the answer, you know, Jesus was always there just calling me back to Him, and I was always looking for something else something that I could like touch or like the answer like to solve all my problems and Jesus is the answer. Feel like I can breathe now you know like I have this joy I I'm not always happy but I have this joy that only can come from from knowing Jesus and I like I said I, I throw myself into service I love it like that's where I thrive is helping people I feel like God does call some of us to just go through these crazy journeys to be able to help other people through them and like give other people hope and and I hope that God will use me to help people I truly have come home it's been really an amazing experience and I'm just really excited to see, you know, where our God leads me next. A year and a half ago now, I met Danny's parents in our small group, and from the very first time we met them, uh, their request was pray for our daughter. Now, I didn't know Danny from Adam, but we were committed to praying for their daughter. And what we're going to do this morning is baptize Danny and her daughter, Lucy. And if you're a member of the Shaw family, would you stand up? We want to recognize that you are here, and we are for you. Come on, Shaws. Let's see where you're at over there. All right, come on, that whole <laughs> row.
want to be clear that one of the priorities of this church is facing outward to be able to share the gospel with folks. And sometimes that includes folks that maybe knew that growing up but have wandered very far away. Here's the truth of the gospel. It's powerful whether you've never heard it before or whether you've heard it a thousand times. What's going to happen today with baptism is not someone who's been transformed through the water. (laughs) Water is a symbol, much like my wedding ring is a symbol of marriage. Baptism is a symbol of a relationship with someone that loves us and is secure in a relationship with us. And so Romans chapter 6, the Apostle Paul writing under the inspiration of the Spirit of God gives us some, some background about the meaning and the symbolism of baptism. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? The symbolism relates to death, the old self being put to death and the new being given life. And uh, Jesus Christ himself died for our sins and rose again. And that's symbolized through the believer who is baptized. We were therefore buried with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too may walk in newness of life. The point of baptism isn't death. The point of baptism is new life. And that's what we're going to celebrate today. That's what we're going to symbolize today. So, uh, Danny, come on out here. This is Danny uh, Blakemore. All right. Come on down here. Danny, great to see you here today. I thank you so much. You've been a part of our church since Christmas Day. I think it was when you first walked in last year. And so, Let me ask you three questions that I ask those who are going to be baptized. Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God who died and rose again? Yes, I do. And by faith, have you asked Jesus Christ to be your own Lord and Savior? I have. Danny, why do you want to be baptized this morning? Uh, To publicly proclaim that Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Well, that's a great answer. And so based on your testimony of faith, I'm going to baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. This is Lucy, and Lucy, you are 10. You are a fifth grader, right? And so it is going to be my pleasure to baptize you this morning. Let me ask you those same questions. Ask your mom, all right? Lucy, do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God who died and rose again? Yes. By faith, have you invited Jesus to be your own personal, your Lord, and your Savior? Mm-hmm. Lu- is that a yes? Yeah. All yeah. right, good. All right. Just want to make sure, no doubt here. So I have a feeling in the home she's willing to talk out a little more than that, right? So, Lucy, third question. Why do you want to be baptized today? To show people that I'm a Christian. All right, great. Well, based on your testimony of faith, I'm going to baptize you, my little sister, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Buried in the likeness of his death, raised in the likeness of his resurrection. Come on out here. This is Greg and Brennan Myra. Myra, come right down here in the middle. Oh, Myra. Brennan, come out. There we go. Good. And uh, Myra's been a part of our church, goodness, six, seven years? All right, great. And so, uh, Brennan, you are a, an eight-year-old, is that right? And you're going into fourth grade? Yes. All right. Well, Brennan, let me ask you those questions, all right? Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who died and rose again? Yes. And by faith, have you trusted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? Yes. Based on your testimony of faith, I'm going to baptize you. First, let me ask you, why do you want to be baptized today? Because I want to tell my church that I have believed in Jesus and that I will every day when I go to sleep, every day when I wake up and when I go to sleep. All right, great. Well, Brennan, ba- that's great advice, by the way. Believe on Jesus in the morning, in the noonday, and in the evening. So, Brennan, based on your testimony of faith, I'm going to baptize you, my little brother. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Dad's going to help, okay? All right. Buried in the likeness of his death, raised in the likeness of his resurrection, to walk in the life. Okay. 